Hydrogen is set to be a very important fuel for the 21st century, especially as nations around the world seek to decarbonize their economies and energy systems. The International Energy Agency projects that, if the world is to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by mid-century, then 13% of global energy demand will need to be met by low-carbon hydrogen. In the U.S., a proposed production tax credit would establish a value based on hydrogen's life cycle carbon intensity. Hydrogen can be made from both renewable and fossil resources through a variety of production pathways, resulting in a wide range of carbon intensities. This demonstrates the need for accurate and transparent tools and accounting systems to calculate hydrogen's carbon intensity. The GREET team has just released a new tool based on the GREET Excel model that offers an easy-to-use and understand interface for modeling hydrogen production and its lifecycle carbon intensity. When the application opens, you'll notice that it looks just like GREET. The difference is a worksheet called H2 User Inputs, and you'll click on that tab to use the new features. Starting in column A, there's a menu of selections to tailor a hydrogen pathway. First, choose well to gate or well to wheel for the scope of the analysis. Then specify the target year for simulation. Next, select whether the hydrogen will be produced in a central location or distributed locations. Then select from the list of hydrogen feedstock sources. Depending on the source, you may have to further specify the feedstock, as is the case with SMR. After you've made the initial selections, click the Enter Process Details button in column C, and Process Input and Output fields will populate in columns D through I. Alternatively, if you don't intend to use your own inputs or outputs, you can click the Greet Defaults button instead, and results will populate from there. For the non-default inputs and outputs route, you'll specify the value and the units for each process input and output. Depending on the pathway, there may be non-numeric inputs as well, like whether or not to include CO2 carbon capture and sequestration, or what electricity generation mix to use. A button labeled Calculate GHG Emissions is activated once the required inputs and outputs are entered, and clicking that button is what generates results in the space below the inputs and outputs area. Next to the inputs and outputs area, you'll see the overall efficiency of the pathway in green text. The emissions results for a pathway are presented in groupings called scopes. Scope 1 emissions are those coming directly from a producer's activities, like stack emissions from a facility or tailpipe emissions from a vehicle. Scope 2 emissions are those resulting from a resource supplied to production activities. Scope 3 emissions are from activities upstream or downstream of production activities, such as transportation or disposal of goods or waste. By default, emissions results are displayed with the scope emissions broken out, along with any emissions credits, and then the total pathway emissions. A selector feature allows users to display single scopes or combinations of scopes, and greenhouse gas results are shown in units of grams of CO2 equivalent per mmBTU of hydrogen, as well as kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilogram of hydrogen. To demonstrate how to use this tool, I'll step through a few pathways and generate some example results. I'll set the scope to be well to gate, the year to 2022, and I'll choose central production for each example. First, I'll look at steam methane reforming, SMR, pathways, both with and without carbon capture. SMR is the most common production pathway, producing hydrogen from natural gas. SMR does result in significant CO2 emissions, but carbon capture can be used to remove the majority of those emissions. I'll make my initial selections at the left of the sheet, using conventional natural gas as my feedstock, for my process details, I'll use 1.4 mmBTU of natural gas and 13 kilowatt hours of electricity for my inputs and 1 mmBTU of hydrogen as my output with no steam generation. And I'll also select yes for the carbon capture option and I'll set the CO2 capture percentage at 90% for this demonstration. After generating emissions results, I can see that the overall efficiency is 69%. I have emissions broken out by scope, 
and the total GHG result is 3.8 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilogram of hydrogen. Let's see what would differ if I opt for no carbon capture with the same pathway. I'll adjust the electricity input to be 1.2 kilowatt hours and the steam output to be 200,000 BTU. Then I'll change the CO2 capture option to no and recalculate. The process efficiency is now 71% and the GHG result is 9.6 kilograms of CO2, nearly triple the GHGs in the model run with carbon sequestration. Next, I'll look at electrolysis pathways that vary by electricity generation mix. As a reminder, electrolysis uses electricity to split water, H2O, into hydrogen and oxygen gas. How we make the electricity used in this process is the most important factor for carbon intensity. I'll make my selections at the left, selecting low temperature electrolysis PEM as the feedstock source. For my process details, I'll enter 55 kilowatt hours of electricity as my input and one kilogram of hydrogen as my output. For my first electricity run, I'll choose grid mix as my generation source. I'll opt for no oxygen co-product credits and I'll try the NPCC mix. The resulting process efficiency is 61% and the total GHG result is 15.2 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per kilogram of hydrogen. Notice that there are no scope 1 emissions since the process is using electricity generated elsewhere, the emissions of which are represented in the scope 2 results. Next, I'll change the electric generation source to nuclear LWR and generate new results. Process efficiency is unchanged but the GHG result is 0.4 kilograms of CO2, and there are no emissions in scope one or scope two, since the electricity is coming from offsite and generation of that electricity is carbon free. Finally, changing my electricity mix to wind, my results show the same process efficiency, but now the GHG result is zero kilograms of CO2. Now that you've been introduced to this new hydrogen modeling tool, you should be able to try it out and generate some pathway results of your own. Hopefully you'll find it to be an easy and simple way to understand the life cycle carbon intensity of your own hydrogen production pathways. Thanks for watching.